Hey, there's at least three of us. Doc, how are you, buddy? I hear the doorbell ringing, and the doorbell is ringing. The virtual doorbell is ringing. And that's, that's the first time I've heard the uh, virtual doorbells. <sighs> yeah, the virtual doorbell. I'm trying to decide between the Zoom versus uh, WebEx for uh, uh, the uh, seminars that I'll be putting on. Oh, wow. People are coming in real quick. Well, my experience is that I have a, uh, like a waiting room. I can see who's coming in. So I'm using like the admit feature. So I'm, I, can, I, can, I can kind of see who's coming in person by person. Hey, Alex. Robin. How are you, my friend? Good. Let's go to here. <laughs> We've got our first dog barking in the background. Yeah. I don't want to go on video. I don't look proper. Oh, who's that? Mm -hmm. Who is that? Is that Cerise? Hello, Cerise. Uh, we're all kind of in our usual home environments, office environments. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Alex, I had one thought, you know, when at the start of the meeting, if when we Work on some site. Know their name. If that could go into the chat window, that makes for tracking things and making notes much easier. For sure, for sure. I'll 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 describe Zoom a little bit for people before they've uh, before the uh, they uh, before we get going. <clears throat> I will use the meetup as a starting point. <clears throat> so let me bring that up. Just kind of waiting for everybody to join here, but I think. Has been my dream job. <laughs> Northwestern. This is Great. quite an eclectic group. Well, it is. So you have 14 people so far on the call. Now, I've been, Jacques, I've been using Zoom for a few years. I find it to be very, very user friendly. It's very uh, reliable in different scenarios. I find it um, it's affordable and um, I'm not using the webinar feature. I'm just using the regular Zoom. Right. Meeting. There is a, a webinar feature that allows you to broadcast up to 10,000 people and it has all kinds of features specifically for webinars. With, whereas this is just a straightforward meeting basically. With the one difference that I'm uh, I've got like a waiting room turned on, which I've never used before actually, but it looks like if I have a meeting, I can, I can preview <clears throat> joining and look at, look at their name and then I can uh, admit them into the meeting call. Are you getting an MP4 uh, made as well? Yeah, so right now I have this meeting set to automatically record. Um, <coughs> as, as we're talking, that's set to record automatically. But Daddy, there's a next one. <laughs> Where's that coming from? Uh, so slice. Easier. So I have this set up to, yeah, so this is actually going to, the way it's set up right now is whoever's speaking is going to take up the, uh, the screen. Do you have a pen and paper? Uh, Alec. Yes, yeah, sir. Hey, Ron, how are you? Uh, not bad, you? Hello, gentlemen. Hanging in there, hanging in there. Good. Um, can you mute, uh, as the host, can you mute... Um, if there's any background noises for anybody else. Yeah, I have to know who it is though. Like I can meet everybody by default. Oh, okay. Like I, for example, if I do this, I'll, I'm gonna, um, I can mute everybody now. So everybody's muted and then they can uh, unmute themselves as they go. So that's probably what I'll end up doing to kind of keep the uh, conversation. So Robin just unmuted himself. So now Robin can speak and so can Fred. Robin hey Alex. Can... Yeah. Hey, Fred. How are you? Good. Good yourself. Good. So yeah. So I usually meet. I don't. I, I don't have this set up to mute automatically by default when people join, but there. That's an option, Jock. In case you're interested, there's a lot of options on how to set up regular meetings. One of them is, for example, you could set it up so that only hosts join. But there's. There, it's a really cool product. It's really well designed. It's got a lot of neat features, and I probably use this maybe three or four times a day, and sometimes more for all my client calls and stuff so we've and the more savvy audience like this is obviously a lot more 
um, a lot more, um, a lot more savvy. So I'm going to actually put a little poll up. Just, I'm just curious here. I'm going to put one up here. Um, uh, so I'm going to make it anonymous. Hmm. And I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to say yes. Thought uh, B-O-L-E, and I was thinking, oh, that's an interesting idea. But I think we're referring to a P O L L, right? Uh, sorry, say again. Mm. I actually, use the, the 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 pulse feature here. Let me go ahead and uh, see if I can actually activate this poll. I really got to figure out how Russ can hang from the ceiling here. <laughs> Who's hanging from this from the ceiling? It's an it's irreconcilable different. problem between Windows 10 and my Asus laptop will never be fixed. Oh my God. Yeah, I, that's a first, Russ. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Russ, your video is somehow upside down. That's right. If I plug in an external video, I can fix it. See, there's uh, we have 20 people in the in the room. Yeah, I find this is a uh, for actually for what we we've, we've been doing, this is actually a lot more convenient and a lot more inclusive. I could have up, up to 100 people in this meeting. So, but uh, as far as uh, the actual meeting itself goes, we'll see how that runs. Um, so, I actually I have a poll set up, but I have no idea how to actually announce it. It's weird. I have a poll and it asks me add a question and it goes to the polls. But I don't see how to actually ask the question to, to announce it. I'm going to leave that off for now. I have never used polls before. All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to the March 17th WordPress Toronto virtual meeting. This is our first virtual meeting, as, as you probably imagined. The reason why we're doing it this way is that we are in kind of a lockdown here in Ontario for the most part. And the facility that we normally meet at is uh, not available for use today. Hopefully this will all be a, a, a bad a dream and, and uh, memory come next meeting, but I don't really know if that's going to be the case or not. So for now we're going to, um, um, we're going to use uh, Zoom to do this. Zoom is a very popular product. Uh, for uh, uh, doing these kind of meetings. Um, let's see, I'm going to, uh, yeah. Thank you, Fred, for uh, showing me the poll sure. feature. But I, actually, I'm not using the webinar version of this. So oh. I, have, I, have, I have a polls button, but I, uh, whenever, whenever it comes up, I, uh, it actually doesn't allow me to, I can edit the poll, but it doesn't, doesn't seem to allow me to, um, to launch the poll. I'm not quite sure why. But if anybody knows, okay. um, I have a, I have a way to edit it. Um, so, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to go. I'm going to share my screen. This is how this works. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. A lot of you are muted right now, so if you can't speak right now, it's most likely because you're muted, and you'll know that you're muted because your video should have a little microphone in the bottom left corner with a little X through it. Now I can see all the participants here in the meeting. We have 19 of them right now, including myself. And I see that Jacques and Robin are unmuted, uh, as is Fred. Uh, and now I see Rob has been unmuted. So, so I, you, I, should, you should practice your mute unmute functionality so that you can, when you, when you, when you speak, you can, mute, uh, you can unmute and then mute again uh, for the, uh, the, rest of the, the rest of the conversation. The reason why is that a lot of people have background noise. And uh, if you all unmute all at the same time, like I'm going to do right now, okay. mute everybody. We'll, we'll introduce background noise from folks that are actually unmuted. But I can see a lot of you are muted anyway. So um, you, can con you can control all of that. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and um, mute everybody. And then if you, if you want to unmute yourself, 
you can practice the muting uh, unmute feature, uh, which is going to be in your toolbar for Zoom. Um, if you use Zoom before, um, this will be very straightforward. You'll, you kind of know what's going on, but if you haven't, um, this will be a fairly new experience for you. Suffice it to say, this is not a, a webinar, this is like a meeting. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the chat. So there is a chat feature that you can turn on by uh, clicking the little chat button uh, in your toolbar. Sometimes you might see it under the more meatballs. Uh, and so it brings up a little chat. I'm gonna send a message to everybody right now. Um, yes, Alex, for some reason on my chat window, it says to Alex uh, privately. Yes. So is there a setting then that opens it up to everyone? Yes, so the chat window, if you specify two, if you, if you click the drop down, you will see everyone at the top. So that's if you want to announce something to everyone, or you can send messages directly to people individually, one-on-one -on -one, if you'd like. So you, either, either you can send a message to everybody uh, or privately. So I can see people sending me messages privately. Thank you, everyone. Hi, Carol. Hi, Ash. Hi, Jim. Um, uh, and so what we'll do here is I will um, monitor the chat as we have questions come up and we'll try to um, address them through the system that way. Um, you can come and go as you please, obviously, by leaving the meeting. You can use the same link again to join again if you want. And this is being recorded so that we can uh, publish this video on, on the WordPress Toronto um, 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 meeting at some point on, on the website. And so whatever we share on our screen, uh, the chat sessions won't be published, but Maybe um, Robin will do some transcription on some of the questions that have been uh, asked, and, and I, I'd appreciate that. Um, so uh, if you want to go ahead There's and- a function, uh, Alex, to save the chat. So I'll try that uh, and see yeah. if it works. That, yeah, that uh, I was just going to say, last night I did this, and it saved a text, it saved an audio file, and saved a video file. That's correct, yeah. So, it'll, uh, so Robin, don't worry. It'll actually automatically save that, and I'll share it with you. So, uh, so the okay. video, the audio, and the- um, and the chat sessions are automatically saved. Um, so, so I uh, would recommend that if you want to ask a question, that you actually set, send it to uh, everyone, so that everyone can see it. Um, and then I will be following that. Um, but uh, is everyone able to actually send a message to everyone, or is it only private uh, private messages available here? I'm just curious. Just I see some. You can uh, change it at the top, I think, Alec. Uh, yeah, I can change it. I've been able to, but uh, yeah, can, can no, somebody... no, it, so you can't do it here. Oh, really? Okay, maybe it's set up. This meeting has been set up to only allow uh, private messages. Okay, well that's fine. So go ahead and just send a message to uh, to myself if you want a question. I'll monitor, and I'll re I'll, I'll announce it. Uh, what is? I think maybe a setting was set to allow only private messaging. Um, uh, so. A lot of options on Zoom meetings, and sometimes I admit one that is uh, available. So I'm just kind of monitoring as people join here. Okay, so what we do normally is a- uh, Alex, there's to... this function called raising your hand, which is kind of cool. If you click under participants, you know, in the um, bottom middle of the screen, participants 21 on my end, mm -hmm. then it gives you this display, which the state of their microphone or video, and um, then this raised hand button, which is kind of cool. I see that. Okay, that's an alternative to chat messages. That's cool. And then you can, and then I can announce you, and you can unmute. I see Cerise has raised her hand. Yeah, that's cool. I actually, yeah, that's that's neat. So, oh, I see lower hand, raise hand. Yeah, okay. I can't raise my hand though. <laughs> uh, the scroll. Well, I, the I had somebody use a raised hand last night on my session. Yeah, okay. So we can, you can, we can use that approach and then you'll unmute yourself if you want to ask. So you can ask your question in chat and that's fine. And I'll look at that and then we'll uh, ask questions. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, I'll call on you and you unmute and then go ahead and ask that way. So that's why we're gonna, and then I'm going to be cool. continuing to monitor people to join here. So we have two, 22 participants, which is great. Uh, so we'll start now to kind of uh, get going. So normally what we have is our meetup uh, group here and uh, I'm going to go through the oldest, uh, I believe they're going to be probably, I would hope it's near the bottom here, although I'm not sure. No, maybe at the top here. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so we're going to start with Anik. Anik, are you actually on the call? I usually ask questions on the, uh, that are on the call, but because we're virtual here, it's kind of hard for me to see. don't know if Anik is here with us today. I don't see her in the list. Um, well, I'm just going to quickly go through a question. Um, I'm attending this event to fix my website. I won't allow viewers to click my links to leave the page. Here's a 404 error. Uh, yeah, this will be hard to diagnose without having a very clear idea as to um, what uh, what's happening. This is the kind of thing that needs a lot more directions to understand. But in general, 404 errors are where the link that you're clicking on doesn't exist on the website that you're going to. So a 404 error means that the URL is incorrect or, and so it needs to be fixed or needs to be reintroduced somehow. Uh, so in general, that's what this error uh, shows and so you're gonna have to sleuth a little bit the issue that's going on here um, let's keep going is uh, Nadia Zanini here Nadia. just feel free to send me a message or unmute yourself if you're here no um, let's take a look at here um, I'm just trying to figure out how to add subcategories to current categories as well let's change font, uh, change fonts and colors of the text Seems simple, but it is not. Um, well, uh, not quite sure what you mean by subcategories to current categories, um, but that's probably a blog post, I would imagine. We won't be able to address that. Changing colors and text, uh, that's gonna be involving either ability in to customize the theme in the customizer or, um, um, uh, yeah, or here's, here's an answer here. Or if you have an external customizer, meaning that you your theme have a customizer, that'll be a way to, 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 custom, uh, to customize it here. So many themes have lots of different mechanisms to customize, and that's why it could be complex. But the best thing to do is you know, I'll log into our WP Toronto website, so you can all see this. Um, and uh, you can see, the I'll show you where the customizer is, and you can see what is going on here. So the customizer appears under appearance customize. Okay. So um, you go here, you will switch to this customizing WP Toronto, which is your website. And this is the customizer that has different various settings for the, the theme that you're using. And sometimes it has the, the settings for the font that you're using. So for example, this theme has a colors option, which allows you to change the colors on the theme. She allows you to change text colors, background colors, text hovers, background. Uh, so lots of different color uh, changes. There's six different color changes you can make here. And uh, it also allows you to change the, um, uh, so you can act actually, you can actually change quite a bit of the colors. There's lots of different color options you can change here. And then, um, then the, this is generate press theme. So this is a theme based in gener generate press uh, framework. And then there's a typography option. Now, you, the, the issue with a customizer is that different themes support different options. And so uh, what's good about Generate Press and some other themes like this is they have a standard set of options that you can change like this, which is ideal because it makes it much easier. Your theme may not support this, and that's really a, a, a factor of the theme that you're using. Um, so uh, that is kind of on that. I don't know if this person is here on the call to speak up, I don't think they are. Um, okay, Jacques, you're here at this time, so that's great. Um, Fern, are you here on the call? Don't see Fern, so I uh, don't quite know what this is, but uh, we'll skip that because I can't. Sorry, Alex, what was the resolution or answer on the question of subcategories? I don't really know what the, answer, the question was, but uh, it's how to add subcategories to current categories. Because um, you can or you can have subcategories just in the usual way for categories, um, and at the same time, um, there are plugins that provide for subcategories in both pages and posts, and some plugins for both pages and posts. It's a long. Mm, Oops. Yeah. So there's like a zillion people who produce plugins and scripts and tutorials and such. <laughs> Got a, uh, I got a comment here from Thava. Is, are you the person that posed the question about the 404? Thava, I unmuted you. You want to speak up? 
Baba? Okay. I'm not sure that you're... Uh... Um, so remember, if you're, if you're speaking and, you, and nobody's responding, it's most likely because you're muted or your microphone isn't working. Um, so let's continue here. Uh, Mark uh, was making some, he, Mark was actually one suggested uh, um, Zoom call. So that's what we're doing. So Rebecca, are you on the call? I think I, I see Rebecca's icon there. Rebecca, are you there? Yes. She's here. Yeah. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hi. Hi. Yeah. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of a, a super newbie, but um, the, the two kind of major things I want to address are the, uh, the issue with Safari. When I open my website in Safari, it won't scroll down using the touchpad on my Mac. It will using the arrow buttons, but I'm just wondering if I've done something to it to, to make it not perform because I've been messing around with CSS quite a lot and I don't exactly know what I'm doing. So hmm. there's any ideas about that. Question. Um, wow, it's going to be hard to test because I don't have a Mac here. Uh, let me just take a look uh, at Do you have side. a touchpad on your computer? Maybe you could... Uh, no. I thought you mean like a, like a mouse pad? Like yeah. A mouse? Not like a mouse, but like a touchpad that you move with your fingers. Like, but like on a, but I don't have a Mac. Is, is this a Mac that you're on? Yeah, I don't know if it does it on a PC because I don't have a PC, but, uh, but it's through, oh, because you're, you wouldn't have Safari on a PC, right? So. Well, yeah. I could, I could, but I'd have to simulate this. Uh, For sharing your screen, Alex. Yeah, why don't you, uh, what, Rebecca, why don't you go in? Right, I'm going to stop my sharing my screen. Can you share your screen and show us the behavior that you're seeing? Okay, well, let's see. Click share the screen. green share with a little arrow yeah. pointing up, and then Good. and then you'll be able to share your screen. I don't know if you guys are seeing this. You should, you should select which screen that you're share. on. Oh, which screen? Yeah, I've got like. It's screen. a good idea to have the screen you're going to select foremost and not buried behind four other screens. Yeah, it's foremost now. Mm. There you go. Sure. You got Did it. You see it. Okay, so so <laughs> I, there's definitely some interesting stuff happening. I can see that the toolbar has been inverted in its uh, natural, um, like the, it's the toolbar. The actual dr drag bar is black, and the background of the of the of the elevator is white. So show me what's happening when you try to scroll with your. Uh, Touchpad. Well, I'm trying to scroll right now and it's not doing anything with my in the touchpad. But then if I move the arrows, now it's moving. You can see that, right? So, so, with, so, when, so does it move when you're in the, so when you click inside of the little elevator, the, the scrolling uh, elevator on the right side of the window, does that move it? Uh, scrolling, hold on a second. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're right up. to the, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Just to the right of that, yeah. Yeah, I know. I just the chat is now in the way of that. Hold oh. on. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to click on it right now. Yeah, kind of erratically. It's moving erratically. Wow. Well, that is not good. I mean, I, I can. It's easy to blame the theme for. Oh, the now it's working actually. Now with the touchpad, it's moving up and down, but only when you're there. Only when I'm on that the elevator, yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense because they're, they're, you're clicking on the uh, elevator control to move it up and down. But yeah. what's happening here is that this this particular uh, theme is uh, custom. I mean, I guess it's custom enough to, or the customizations have been made such that it uh, it's it hasn't been actually tested on a uh, on a Safari browser, I guess. Um, but at least it's not exactly. I just wonder if it's it's worth like really spending a lot of time to fix though because I'm not sure how many people use Safari anymore. Well, no, I mean like it's I, basically anybody on a Mac most likely will be using Safari. So like, uh, <laughs> I use Chrome. I think a lot of people use Chrome. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I, I think I Rebecca, Safari. you're right. You think that's yeah. true? I use Safari and it's working fine. Oh really? You're in Safari and it's working? Yeah. Okay. Well, my touchpad is a little bit. Uh, temperamental. Mm. Well, have you 
so the only thing I would also suggest is clearing your cache or anything, but are you having this issue on any other website or just yours? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I never use Safari. So let me, let me just uh, open up another website and see. Yeah. Cause I mean, if it's a hardware issue, that's a whole nother problem. <clears throat> on my Safari uh, desktop, it uh, moves fine with a magic mouse where you're using the touch function, not moving the mouse itself. Okay. Yeah, it always seems to be working on, on Safari. This is a standard, uh, this is a standard, uh, bra you know, standard kind of interface. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Alec, yeah. I'm running it on Safari on my iPad. Uh -huh. And interestingly enough, when I click on that museums to bring up museums, my personal experience, uh -huh. I don't know whether a reader mode kicks in on I, uh, Safari or not, but instead of having the black ground, background, I've got a white background with black type. Do you? Okay. I think it's probably very not optimized for for other devices. Um, I paid a designer not a whole lot of money to do it and she may not have uh, she may not have put in the time to optimize it for phones or those kinds of things. So yeah. Or, that's or, or chose, chose a theme that is uh, hasn't really completely been tested. This is a fairly fancy looking uh, design of a site so although it's not really com overly complex but there's a lot of photography and there's a lot of uh there's there's a menu here that kind of appears in the upper right corner i mean i i use it with a mouse scrolling mouse it seems to be working naturally so it's probably there's some Actually, edge cases of where it's not working on my safari when i went to the museum's page it doesn't scroll as the home page does ah so at a minimum it's inconsistent uh -huh. So it doesn't scroll as the home page does. How how does it scroll? Well, it's not with the just touch. It's not scrolling at all. It's just frozen. Not frozen literally, but just uh -huh. doesn't do anything. Okay. But if I were to select the scroll bar, the wit, you know, the what do you call it, the indicator, yeah, it moves up and down, but that's by moving the mouse. Okay. I think that's probably the same behavior that I'm having. I don't have an actual mouse, I just have the the scroll pad there. So Sorry, do you have the touchpad or the magic mouse? I have a touch. Well, I don't know what a magic mouse is. I have a little pad that I touch. That's all I have. I don't have any other. Right. Well, the magic mouse is just a, like a, a regular mouse that you can move around, but the top surface of it's a touch surface, so it will move the cursor and execute things by touch rather than by the mouse physically moving. Oh. Okay, maybe it's called a magic mouse. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not no, that's the product name. It's called the Magic Mouse because there was something before it. I forget the name, but it didn't have okay. these capabilities. What I'm using is built into my MacBook Air. Yeah, yeah it's not. It's not moving. Uh, uh, it repl basically replaces the uh, um, touchpad on the uh, Apple. Hey, Dan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you said you can uh, scroll with MacBook Air in chat here. So you. Yeah, but that was on Safari, not on uh, Chrome, not on Safari. Uh, I thought I was on Safari, but I was. Well. So you're, you're seeing the same problem on Safari? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems like like the, the, the layout of the page is not telling the browser that it's tall enough to scroll. Hmm. Oh, yeah? I think that museum page actually has two uh, scroller uh, portions because I have one that I can move down and it doesn't scroll the page. And then I click on the one that's right beside it and it scrolls down the page like normal. Yeah, when, when clicking on the scroll bar on the right hand side, it does move. But just when you're using like the finger or two finger gesture on the trackpad, nothing moves. Yeah, I mean. How do you get back to the home page? Uh, you click menu. Uh, I click on Rebecca. I did. Oh, home's at the bottom. Okay, sorry. I was thinking it was the logo on the top left. Yeah, so definitely the home page <laughs> it performs normally, but the blog page or the blog post don't. Blog post don't. Jim raises. Hey. 
hear some background noise. Right. right. So this this looks like not um, standard code probably because it's not working in one browser and is working in another browser. Okay. So that might be like an angle to to attack this this bug. Um, maybe look at the way they implemented because it's not a standard scroll bar on the right hand side. It's like it's not using the UI of the browser, right? It's something custom. So maybe that that issue uh, creates a bug with scrolling. Okay, so if I were to go and to look into the CSS, like what would I, is there anything I can look for? Well, it, it can be a, a combination of CSS and JavaScript for this uh, implementation of, of a custom scroll bar. So and, and I would the JavaScript ask, it moves things, right? It's the CSS presents things, but the JavaScript would be what actually causes things to happen. Okay. Yeah. There could be several ways to implement this type of scroll bar. I would I would look maybe uh, a JavaScript file doing the, 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 the hard work of this and uh, maybe just disabling it and using the standard scroll bar which is better okay. in UI perspective anyway. Maybe it looks not as good, but um, know, scrolling is a pretty <laughs> uh, expected thing on a website. Yes, exactly. <laughs> pretty basic function of the website. And I've is, is had a good? look on, on Safari on both my MacBook Pro and on my iPad. Uh, it does not have responsive design built into it. Uh, because on Safari on my iPad, I get the black background, all those pages, and I get all that stuff that I'm seeing on your display. Mm -hmm. On my iPad, I go into a museum page, for instance, pick like museums, my personal experience. And as I said earlier, it flips over and gives me a white background with black print. And I can't find any pictures. So oh. I, I, there's something called responsive design, which is part of usually part of standard design themes these days, mm -hmm. where uh, a website will adjust to be different things yeah. on different devices, different size displays and so on. Okay. Cool. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna move on because we have a lot of interesting questions here, but, I, but I'm gonna go to your second one. I think it's a little bit easier to answer. You, you often get a page not found. Oh, that that seems to be fine, actually. That problem, I just checked now, and now it's working. Okay, but in case you have uh, Google indexing content that is actually not active on your site anymore, you can install a plugin called Redirection. It's a plugin okay. that basically allows you to catch old links that you don't have on your site and redirect them to any destination you want. It's, oh, a, very, okay. it's, it's, it's a very handy plugin, Redirection. It's very configurable. It allow, it's, it's free, actually. And it basically allows you to kind of move people from pages or even slugs that don't exist anymore. Or, or if you just want to create a slug that doesn't even, it's not really a, a page on your site, you can create an alias for a page with redirection and then have it go to a different page. So it's kind of, it's really handy for a lot of different purposes. Okay, um, that's, that's really useful actually. Mm -hmm. Problems with photo resolution looking like garbage, but I <laughs> uploaded them at a decent resolution. Problem with resizing. Yeah, this is, well, I mean, uh, it all depends on, I guess, again, like what your theme is doing and kind of how it's being inserted into um, a, a site. Can you give me, a, can you give us an example of what, what that looks like? Um, I do have something actually. Let's see. Let me, let me just navigate through my, maybe, it, um, is my screen still shared, is it? Yep, yep. Okay, great. Okay. Guys, I noticed when I was leaving the home page in Chrome that it really wound up Chrome and sort of, you know, hung Chrome for 10 seconds before whatever was happening on that page terminated and let go. Uh, so it's, there's definitely something wrong with the JavaScript. Oh, is there? Okay. Is that 
good to know. Um, okay, now these, okay, for instance, like this image here, it looks kind of quite blurry. The one beside it is quite good with these people here, but this purple one here, it seems quite blurry. Like I had a decent resolution of image, but I don't know. They looked worse before actually, to be frank. I don't know why they look more or less fine here. Okay, that question is not uh, my kind of key issue. More pressing to me is this, can you see this like issue with the captions being uh -huh. left justified? You know, they're not really centered underneath the, um, uh -huh. underneath yeah, the, the uh, they're, well, I see them actually directly centered under each image. Well, actually they're centered, but the block within which they're found is not itself centered. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. So it's like a div that's sort of left um, aligned and the content of the div is centered. Yeah. How, how, how is this page composed? With What's the, what's the composition? The gallery space with what? Three columns, I guess? Gallery, in the gallery three columns? Does that help you at all? <laughs> But, but like how, how, how did you, how did you how, edit, edit this space so we can see kind of what what it is that you're... Uh, yeah, whatever the style is for the block, for the caption as a whole, that's the style to find and change or fix or whatever. Okay, so the, so the, the block caption style, that's what I should go into fix? Well, yeah, but block. I mean, like if you... It, it, you I'm, I'm not, it, I mean, it may not be a block, but I mean, block in the broadest sense most likely okay. it could be a div element do you, do you, can you can you edit the page so we can see kind of how that composition yeah, is put together you mean do you want me to go into the back end i actually don't know coding so this may be beyond no, that's okay but but it's but it's right you have an edit page you're actually logged yeah. in already yeah yeah can i, I, can, I can, can sit there yeah sorry there you go you just click that right there. Why are we not here? Wouldn't we be better with the inspect uh, command in the browser? Do you want that instead? Well, um, I mean, wouldn't it be? I just want to see. I just want to see if there's ideal. a. I, I, well, I just want to see how it's composed, so I can see if there's a way to like, even look at this, uh, these uh, pictures and uh, and their captions. Like. No. Okay. Here we go. Oh, so you, you're just using a. Oh, you're just using the. Um, the block editor, okay. So that so you click on one of those pictures. Is that like a? Uh, uh, oh, it's a it's a you're using the gallery, okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so that must be something around the CSS of the theme that uh, that's causing that. Is that is that text part of it? Is that text superimposed in the pictures? Where's that text? That's go? the caption. It, it, the it caption looks here. It looks like it covers the image, but when you actually publish yeah. it, it uh, right. Could we look at the oh, HTML view? Sorry? Could we look at the HTML just to see what, where sure. that Ed Pen or Pen or whatever his name is, in, sure. in what how, element does that appear? How do I do that? Should I just do inspect? Edit, edit, edit it. No, edit it as HTML. Mm -hmm. On those meatballs that you were on just now? Yeah. Go to edit, H, edit it as HTML. Nope. Oh. A little, the little control. Um, Right above that, where there's all these little dots. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Now let's just look for that guy's name. What was it? Ed something or other? Ed PN? Yeah. yeah. See what that kind of turns up in. <clears throat> it's a fig caption, class, blocks, gallery, item caption. Sorry. That wasn't helpful here. I mean, is there anything outside um, of, or a, is there an apparent to the fig capture element? Uh, Rebecca? Yeah? I see that on the, um, on the style sheet, there's a margin for the images, mm -hmm. a left margin of 20 pixels, which moves off, moves off of the caption. So I can, one, I can share my screen. Okay. And I can show you uh, where it can be fixed. Uh, sure. That would be wonderful. Pop your sharing, Rebecca, and let Dan share. 
Okay. Um, I already did. I took care of the stop sharing. All yeah. right. Um, okay, so I'll share my screen here. All right, you got my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now, so this is the, the, the caption, it's le like moved, shifted to the left. Mm -hmm. so I'm looking at the image here. I, I right click and then did inspect. Yeah. And then over here, down here, I can see for the image tag, what type of CSS is applied. Okay. I can see a margin left here. Uh huh. If I reduce it. Ah, yeah. Look at that. So, okay. so this 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 could be a solution, but it's there because I guess it's in the someone CSS. decided it it should be there. Maybe it didn't notice the implication it had on the gallery. So that would be the first place to check. But remember, once you change it here every image which is in the main content will be affected. Okay. So just a second, changes here literally only affect what we're seeing as soon as you leave this page. Yes. There are no safe changes. So Dan's right, you have to find this chunk of CSS code and change right. it and then it will apply to all images. No, it'll apply to every image image within the main content. So maybe for like single images, it's okay. But if you want it to apply only on gallery, so you can take this. This is the gallery class here. Okay. I want it to apply to all the images. They also tend to have this weird. Yes, also for single images? Yes. All right. So in that case, you can go to the style, mm -hmm. which is here, you see? It tells yeah. you where it is. It's okay. in the themes, Rebecca, and then style.css, and even you can go to line 309. Oh, okay, brilliant. And then you look for margin left and margin right, uh -huh. and you change it to zero. You can put this in the uh, yeah, I can. The, the customizer CSS as well, right? Additional. Yeah, but it's best to edit the style sheet. You, 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 it's better practice to have all changes in one place, because if you start making in different places, then you don't know where to look for, or it's harder to, to find it. Should I go through theme editor? Uh, no. the, best pra the best way to go, <laughs> the best way to go is going through FTP, but I don't know if you have that. You no, know, I. So I'll, I'll revert and, and go to what Alex said. Mm -hmm. And in your customizer, mm -hmm. you have an option to add CSS. Okay. I'm not sure if you know where to do that. Is it through theme editor? I, I remember seeing that. It will be in a customizer like that I was showing earlier for appearance. Let's, let's, uh, uh, Dan. Yeah. Can you, can you pop, uh, the, uh, the CSS that you'd want her to add into this chat window and just send yeah. it to Rebecca? That could work. Yeah. And then, and then you can share her screen and then. Uh, I don't have, I just have private to you. I don't have other options. Oh you, oh, you can't send it to Rebecca privately? No, I, I don't have an option to. Okay, just send it to me and then I'll send it to her. Uh, uh, Dan, what was your rationale again for not changing in the style sheet? Was it because you wouldn't be able to identify? Well, the more you get scattered around with classes and code all over the, your website, it's harder to maintain, right? <laughs> Right, but that's why we do the style sheet change rather than the customizer change. So that you won't right. have two settings to worry about rather than one. Right, but Rebecca is not familiar and doesn't feel comfortable using FTP. So also, and I would she, can find, she can find the style sheet in question though just with a cPanel file manager, for example, or... Uh, yeah, but this is uh, Chinese and although Rebecca is pretty familiar with Chinese art, she might not be familiar with FTP Chinese. There's also one other thing. If you change the style sheet for the uh, for the for the theme, you probably need to introduce a child theme so that you don't have to. If you I think there is a child theme here. Well, there is a, a child theme being used. Yeah, because the style you can see here. I, I, I'm still showing my peer, right? Yeah. You can see here. Uh, 
You see, it goes to themes and then Rebecca catching. Oh, okay. So there's, well, oh, no, that may not be a child theme. Yeah. It's not getting updated because it's not a theme. Oh, oh you, you don't think there's another theme that it's inheriting from? Okay. Well, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we don't, line, but we don't uh, really know until she goes into line her coding, but yeah, based on my experience. Uh, yeah, we don't, but we don't really know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway, so I'll send this, uh, this yeah. little piece so you're, of code. You're changing the margin left to, z to zero pixels. Basically. Margin left and margin right. Yeah. Oh, and margin right to zero. Yeah. Rebecca, CSS is very handy. Um, that was what was what, what Robin suggested we go to first is inspect because just about any of these kind of positioning things can be fixed with CSS usually. That's and, what I've been doing so far. Um, mm -hmm. I've just been changing it in the CSS directly without doing the additional uh, CSS, but I don't know if that is a move to make. Um, if, if I have to update the theme, I'll lose all of that, right? Uh, well, if you if you update the theme and you overwrite your CSS, your styles that CSS file, yeah. But if you do it in additional CSS, you won't. Okay. Um, so the additional CSS, Alex, that uh, by definition it has priority over the other CSS. No, well, no, not priority. It has well, it's read after well, it's read and instantiated after the style all uh, the built-in CSS style sheets. Right. So it would, it would be implemented last. Yeah, it implements right. last unless time. something was marked important beforehand. Uh, yeah. But um, this theme will probably not be updated, right? Because mm -hmm. it seems like she designed it just for me. Like the name of the theme is Rebecca Catching. You know, the way I think of it is like, if I'm going to be updating CSS and I know you're owning it and you know that you're going to be putting everything, all CSS in advanced CSS in the additional CSS, then you know, then you know you're, you're most likely going to be putting that. I, I think to, 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 uh, to, to Dan's point, sometimes CSS can be introduced in other places other than the theme styles that CSS or the customized CSS. You can put, there's probably a lot of other places where you can introduce CSS. So, um, uh, but the additional, so if you share your screen again, Rebecca, I, I shared with you the, uh, the uh, CSS directive or the CSS rule that Dan sh sent me in chat. You can copy and paste that. If you share your screen, we'll navigate you to the additional CSS app. You might even have some stuff there already. Hold on a sec. Here we go. This, is a good, this is a good thing to know how to do anyway. Like in general, yeah. any kind of positioning issues you want to adjust. Yeah, so right there, you're, you're right. Additional, uh, so actually, you have something called simple CSS. Not sure what that is. So your theme has, what is simple CSS? Uh, okay. So you, could, you should be able to put that text that, put, that I provided you right there. Okay, what, I'm just trying to figure out how to find that text. That's that, in the chat window. Okay, let me go back. Hmm. That's the one problem with that typewriter effect is that if you have to sort of stare at the page for a while, <laughs> it becomes one of those epileptic triggers. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I not find the chat window? Sorry, I'm just trying to close some stuff here. Um, chat window. This should be like a chat uh, icon. Oh, the, here, the... here it is. Okay. No. Chat icon. Chat, a chat bubble in orange. Yeah, I know. Oh, here we go. Is that it? Okay, there we go. Brilliant. Okay, so I just copied this, and what do I want to do now? Paste it on line five. Just, just paste it on line five. Oh, just paste it there. Okay. It looks like somebody put other content there. Oh, take off the high, please. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> yeah, that would not help anything, would it? Uh, that's that's so. It's, it's giving an error there, which is good. You don't want that. <laughs> so. So that so that's margin right, margin left are set to zero for all images in the uh, hashtag main content class. Okay, so should I publish and then see what happens? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then I'll go to site.
hey, they look a lot better. That's great. Yeah. Good job, team. Good job. Great. Great stuff, guys. Thanks. That's amazing. That is what this meetup is all about. Yeah, no. <laughs> it takes a little time, but it's worth it. I like to choose these kind of uh, low-hanging fruit because these are these are the kind of things we're fairly confident with the groups that we have here. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially because it's more complicated stuff I'm not necessarily uh, equipped to do yet. But no, I, I, I urge you and everybody on the call to get familiar with CSS in relation to any kind of formatting issues. When a theme is not doing what it expects you to do, you can almost always find a solution by doing the inspect and experimenting, but you got to kind of know what you're doing in a sense. You got to know what CSS is first, mm -hmm. know how to control it and know and learn about the properties that your theme may be applying. Every yeah. website on the internet has at least a little bit of CSS related to it. And that, that's how I made all the changes that I was able to make so far. Which is yeah. Yeah. You know, and so sometimes themes have that kind of information. So remember that some of the CSS you've added may have implications and may have been mayor and maybe doing things as well so um yes <laughs> but um okay so that's good um i just did this on the ipad on this same page uh -huh. and all the images are vertically stacked i mean okay. you just roll up and down but you don't have any layout like you do on this yeah he's showing do you have any ideas about that? I mean, I think the optimization, as I said, is probably pretty awful. <laughs> it's probably just a matter of the fact that you're dealing with a certain format size, a certain orientation. Mm -hmm. if I turn I it, like... Even if I turn it to landscape orientation on the iPad, I still just get them all stacked. I mean, they look fine. There's... I think that I think the responsiveness of this theme is actually creating a creating a creating a um, an issue there yeah. I, should, I should i should uh, i should say that if i if i create a narrower window size narrower than my normal computer just by manually resizing it, mm -hmm. it at some point there is going to be an overlap in the captions um not not really but they do start kind of it does, it does start stacking it on a regular computer but it's okay uh, but I've, I saw a couple of them that, that are overlapping. So this is you know, using the built-in block editor. You might want to consider uh, how that built-in block editor and its uh, CSS and kind of continuing to tweak a little bit. One thing you can do is test uh, various pages using um, online tools that allow you to do testing on various devices. Now, visibility, not necessarily usability, but at least uh, what it looks like. So I use a tool called um, I use a Chrome plugin called web developer. Oh, okay. Uh, and, um, it's, uh, it's, a uh, it's called web developer. That's just the name of the, and it has a feature to, um, to resize, uh, in you view responsive layout. So I'm going to share my screen. You can see kind of what that looks like. This okay. is useful for everybody actually on the call because, um, it seems to break down though on the gallery. Otherwise, the uh, responsiveness is uh, definitely there for the uh, text okay. and uh, uh, blocks and, and menus. Okay. For example, like here, this I just so I just turned on the responsive layouts uh -huh. of this plugin, this Chrome plugin. Yeah. Uh, re resize view responsive layouts, and you can define different responsive layouts, and it gives you all these different viewports. So mm -hmm. you could see, like, here's what it looks like on a very tiny iPhone four, for example. Okay. And uh, interestingly oh, yeah. enough, according to this, it actually continues to stack like this. So yeah. you said on an iPad, is that right? Uh, so here's an 800 by 600 small tablet. Uh, don't see that actually happening here. So it might actually be doing something different on Safari. So that's probably what's on an iPad. And if I wanted to change that, can I go into the CSS and tell it not to stack when using a... Uh, <laughs> Well, that'll be part of the responsive theme that, you know, you got to have a device in order to test what, what's being observed. Th this particular tool is, is showing what it would do if it's as we size, but there might be some other browser specific issues that are, that are not being displayed here properly. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's a definitely a testing issue, right? To get, you get into, but yeah, I mean, in, in theory, yes, the CSS would potentially fix that because the CSS is probably what's being applied dynamically when the viewport changes. It's more advanced than what we just did though. So if I go into the CSS, is there something that says iPhone? 
uh, no, it won't be that. No. It won't be that straightforward. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I might if, just... it, if it was only that straightforward, it's it'll be the theme how it implements the responsiveness, and it's always different. Yeah. It's, it's always something unique. I, I I don't care. So I mean, most of the people who would be viewing the site are like probably in their office, you know, because I'm sending them some links to something that I wrote. It's like more for for work. So I, I you know I don't think I have the tools to 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 go that far and optimize it, but. Okay. But thanks. So, yeah, okay, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll move on. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Just uh, one last point, um, Alex. Yeah. I noticed, um, Rebecca, that it looks like permalinks is turned on, but I see the odd page that's with the post ID rather than a permalink. Oh, okay, so. Well, I guess maybe that's because the page couldn't be found. I just. Uh, which page was I just on and clicked the perm, clicked the and post ID yeah. version and then I got the oops, that page can't be found. That has happened to me too. Okay, so uh, you know what's going on with that or? No, I just wanted to see if anybody else had the same observation. Yeah, I see um, food writing and then more than one way to skin a duck. Oh, that, that, that does it make a difference, uh, Dan, if the page is not found? That that I would think not. Draft actually, that is not published. That more than one way to skin a duck. Yeah, but it, it's on the menu. But so remove it from the menu. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mackenzie Clement, are you here, Mackenzie? Thanks a lot, guys. It was great. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's see, is Mackenzie here? I don't think so, but. Uh, I should hope and resolve every time I update my site crashes. I'm not sure what to do. That is a very difficult question. Um, if you're <laughs> updating your site and it crashes, you have a problem with something on your site. You need to probably restore it from a backup because uh, it shouldn't crash when you update, but it's possible. A plugin could be partially updated. All kinds of things could happen that are not properly updating. So uh, you either, either do a backup, potentially find a different host because it shouldn't be doing that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Okay, uh, Omri Mako. I, th I think I saw Omri join here. Omri, are you there? Yeah. Hey, Omri, how are you? Omri, I don't think you have a uh, mic available, do you? Do you hear me now? There you are. Hey, Omri, how are you? Good, good. Okay, so um, you have a portfolio website, but uh, learn which tools and plugins are recommended for portfolios. Well, you just saw a bit of a website that uses a portfolio. Um, I don't actually have any particular plugins. Um, uh, so we're looking at the site here. Well, let's, let's take a look at it together. Yeah. And we can, uh, um, this is the, this is Omri's portfolio site. Um, it's still, um, I'm trying to upgrade it. And yeah. The host, but this is just the uh, free plan. Well, your, your, but your portfolio is not an art portfolio. Yours is about making maps. Correct. Yes. That's very interesting. Yeah. That's very unusual and very, um, not, not the usual portfolio size. Yeah. Maps are different. Yeah. Do you know, um, a wordpress.com web, uh, website. Yeah. yeah it is. So there's restrictions as to what can be done. Yes. Yes. I know. Uh, it's just, uh, I got it a long time ago and <clears throat> didn't touch it for a while, but now I want to upgrade it. Um, is any of the people here knows a little bit about um, leaflets or other tools that uh, allow you to uh, put maps on web on the web websites? Oh, not really. Anybody have any advice for this? I don't have really. Anything. Well, uh, when you say maps, do you mean ma images of maps or or real maps like real Google maps. maps? Google Maps and. Um, other maps that you create uh, in the, uh, with software. I just don't know how to put them on the website. So you, if you're Hopefully. using the block editor, which I guess you are if you're on WordPress.com, mm -hmm. one of the blocks is called uh, map block or Google map embed block. Okay. What you can do is you can paste the Google maps URL yeah. into that block and it will display the map. Okay, didn't know that. So that, that would be one option. Another option would be to do a print screen of the map you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because maybe if it's, if it's a map with some GIS properties like overlays and stuff like that, like you mm -hmm. have there, mm -hmm. 
you might want to just add a JPEG for a yeah, yeah. And then you can use like the image block or you can use a gallery block. But I, I would stick to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. put the image, a big image on top, then underneath that, put your description and what you're trying to explain or talk about. And not go into very fancy galleries because they tend to be very hard to implement in a good way. Mm -hmm. And as you you know you see that you know on mobile or different tablets they don't play very nice. So I would keep it simple, especially if you have good things to say about you know pictures and and maps. Mm -hmm. That's my. Uh, I'd probably put each picture on its own page. Yeah. yeah. Give it lots of space to, to describe what it is and. If you want, you could try to find a, I think the one on the blocks have, a, uh, in a block editor, have ability to have a light box. So you can create, when you click on it, it opens up a larger view of it and puts everything behind it in black. So um, yeah, that, that's some suggestions. But I mean, like it's, this is one of those things where you have to experiment really. And it's hard to kind of know, uh, you almost have to find another site that you like and find out what theme they're using and see what kind of plugins they're using. Yep. Um, that's another approach. And WordPress.com, they have a pretty good uh, help section. So okay. if you go there and you, you type, you know, image block or gallery block, you'll get a, like a good page explaining how, how to use and utilize. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move on here. I had another one from Cherry. Cherry, are you here? Cherry? Um, blog in the Yoast SEO. Well, it's not very specific, so I don't have to move on. There's not, uh, there's not much there in terms of uh, what the question is. Okay, Sarah. So, Sarah, I know that you joined earlier, and I uh, let me see here where you are at. Oh, Sarah's not here anymore. Oh, that's too bad. I know she was on the call earlier, but uh, um, actually, sorry, I have to go for a sec. Can I call you back in like fifteen minutes? Is that Sarah? Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Oh, hey, Sarah. Yeah. 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 Guys... Sorry. Um, someone called me in between things and I thought this would take a little bit longer. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you, do you want to, do you want to stay or do you want to go? Yeah, I know. I need, I can stay totally. Sounds like that uh, clash song. Should I stay or should I go now? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so here you are, you're up. Um, I feel like uh, Howard Stern on his Colin show. Um, but I'm not going to be like Howard Stern. Don't worry. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> no, I've, I've been like working on some other stuff in, until I've seen my, see me sort of scroll into this. Cool. So. <laughs> so I can't figure out how to fix my menu. Try going to customize theme section and fiddle around, but no go. I want menu option to line up at the top with the right alignment. But it doubles up. Also, if I have the selected, the hamburger bar doesn't show up on mobile. Yeah. So uh, okay. I can so. share my screen or yeah, uh, ahead. anything that works. Go ahead, go ahead and show us kind of where, what, what, what you're observing. Probably another um, CSS. CSS uh, it says you cannot start screen share while other participant is sharing. Oh, oh there we go, go ahead. Sorry, I was sharing. Okay. So. No worries. <laughs> um, this one, share. Okay, so uh, this is my WordPress. Here's the. Here is the website. So on the left side, there are the options for the menu. Then there's a button for some reason in the middle to go to the home. And then there's the stuff on the right side. And the right ones have the search bar, which I want to keep, as well as the little icons for social stuff. Um, so this is what I want to keep on the right side. I don't want the left. And I really have not been able to figure out how to remove wow. that. So that's exactly um, the same menu bar as the one them on the right, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And then when I scroll down, it like gets lost because there's no oh. background. And I've tried to add like a semi-transparent thing bar behind it, but it only creates buttons rather than a bar. So it looks really ugly. <laughs> I'm, I'm just at a loss here. <laughs> Please. Well, let's, uh, let's look at your, I would start with looking at your menus and your, in your, um, yeah, you can click, um, Appearance menus. Let's see what let's see what's uh, happening in the menu system. Menus. I thought I was okay, but I guess it's just plug and chug. <laughs> so yes, I've tried fiddling around with like main menu and top menu and stuff, and I'm just so confused. <laughs> so 
it says that this menu is set at the main. Is there, are there any, uh, do you have any other menus? No, I've only had the one because I, I tried to make two to see which one would work. And then I got rid of it because I'm like, I don't know what's what's going well, on. If you, if you turn off the display location of this menu altogether, is there anything that's left? Sorry, the display location? Yeah, so at the bottom there, it says display location main. Uncheck that and hit save. Uncheck that and save. And see what happens to your system. Then it only has it on the left side and oh, there's so no the, search bar. Uh, so somehow that, that menu bar is being added without even the menu editor. It's like some kind of default menu bar. I guess but, I think it's Ocean WP as okay. the theme. Yeah, but that but that's the issue. It's like there there's a there's a menu here that's being added without you actually adding it. Yeah. Why don't we check the customizer? Okay. Because that would be potentially where menus are controlled. Indeed. For this particular theme. Wait. Indeed. <clears throat> no. Never mind, that's the wrong button. No, no, not the editor. <laughs> uh, nope. Customize. Appearance customize. Appearance customize. Uh -huh. That's it. Yes, yes. Ocean WP should be fast in giving you its uh, response. I can, can close my other windows because Chrome seems to be a little. Yeah. Not so nice to my everything. Zoom, so, zoom slows things down a little bit. Then go to menus. Okay. And let's see. Well, I've only got two choices. Let's look at main menus quickly and then go on to location. Okay, so that's what we saw before. What is the menu location? Just down so, below. So you, see, so you see, it does. It's not turned because we turned it off in the other place. This is the same yeah, configuration, exactly. I think. Yeah. But but the, but the thing is, is that we turned it off. We turned off the main menu everywhere, and yet there's a menu there. So the question is, what is turning on that other menu? Uh huh. And I wonder <laughs> if it's a widget that's actually been activated somewhere. But let's just see. Let's go back. Yeah, it might be that sticky menu uh, plugin. Oh really? Yeah, there's a sticky menu uh, plugin that's being. Uh, no, it, it, this happened before the sticky menu plugin added, like before I added the sticky menu plugin. Okay. All right. Well, let's go back. Go back. Okay. So right now, according to this configuration, main menu shouldn't appear at all. And so we'll, let, let's click on view all locations and see if there's any other place. See now, there is no other menus activated in the system. Correct. Now, actually, in top bar, let's select your main menu and see what happens. Me, it's bright. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happens. That's bizarre. Nothing, yeah. <laughs> and, now, and now, turn off top bar and select main menu. I bet you that's going to uh, switch and add the. Uh, go ahead and select ma the main and select main menu. And that's probably going to add the one on the right. Yeah, probably. I imagine. Yeah. That's exactly what it does. Okay. And and this one has the search button, which is what I want as well. I yeah. think I added that specifically. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, all right. So let's turn that off so that we're not getting confused because <laughs> we, we still want, we want to eradicate that first one. So the question is where? This is, this is <laughs> the bane of my existence. <laughs> like, all right. This so is, this is like, this it is might be an element or uh, if she has the pro version, she can, uh, or someone can do it for her, uh, create a uh, theme uh, a header, which allows for the uh, menu to be specified. And it, uh, Ocean WP would then turn off uh, the other menus. I, I don't have any uh, pro version of anything. So you don't have the pro version. Okay, so then you're out of Elementor being the cause of the problem. That's go correct. go back. Go back to the main. Brian, in widgets? Could it be in one of the widgets? Yeah, that's that's what I was going to look next. Yeah. So go back and let's look at uh, the. 
widgets. I only have. You only have ones. footers as. You only, <laughs> you only have footers as widgets. I don't even know where these top ones are coming from either. So, <laughs> yeah. And why? I guess the hover is a weird. That's new. I didn't even see that before. This hovering weirdness. Anyway, side note. <laughs> um, let's go back. Uh, what else do we have here? Homepage settings. I don't think they'll have anything we can check. Well, actually, let's look at header. Edit. Top bar header, and let's look in there. Top bar. So this is General. an example of where you've got all kinds Nothing. of Nothing. Okay. Header. Top bar is. Menu? Just out of curiosity, why don't we try to enable that top bar and see what the effect is? Because we can just uncheck it. Yeah. Okay. After we tried it. Do, 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 do. And mm -hmm. yeah, top, an actual top yeah, bar. Like top bar on top of everything. <laughs> yeah. So, like for oh, ads or oh, content oh. or something. I see. Yeah. There's your content here. Yeah, I see it. Okay. All right. Let me turn that off. I mean, you, can, okay. you can do stuff with it, but only when you really want to. Yeah. It's like a menu above a menu. Um, let's yeah, let's look at this header thing. What's going on here? <laughs> well, there's something um, said for page builders and being able to just drag the component in question to its new location. <laughs> well, this is yeah, a theme. Well, we're looking at a theme called header. Or no, we're looking at the whatever this theme is. So click on menu and see what that is. And does Ocean uh, WP come with a page builder? Uh, I think I I have Elementor with it, but you can just use the regular WordPress uh, to create yes. pages, I think. <laughs> well, what, yes, that's so right. what is all of this here? Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't seem to be. I would try the other one, go back one. Yeah. Do, do, do. Social media or mobile? So yeah, social, social media. Yeah. Well, that's, social probably, media? that's that. This stuff over here, right? Well, let's just see. You don't know until you try it because you have no, one, you have no idea like what, <laughs> like what it is, right? This is like the customizer and all its function. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay, so now you know what that is. Oh, but that's really ugly because if I add it, then the last section goes into two lines, which is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it changes. It's, I mean, it changes the layout of it a little bit, right? But you can, but, but that's where you can actually configure all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, all the all the various different options and all the icons that appear there. So that's yeah. what that is. That's where all that's that's where all that stuff is being set. Okay. So what's mobile well, menu? Uh, I guess for the mobile version, which yeah, the, is but, ugly because there used to be a little hamburger bar here when I had the other menu coming up on the right side, but now without it, there's no menu. Well, yeah, because we turned it off, right? Yeah. So, but the question but is, what is, what is? Huh. Mm. So the pop up is the determining that other menus use. Hmm. Uh, I thought Ocean WP is like a really basic, really well, like very common use theme. Yes, so, you know, safe. People can help me. This is really confusing. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't make, I, you know, that assumption that you just made, I would make about any theme or any, 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 the, first of all, any commercial theme of any kind or even one that's built on a framework is by definition more complex than any of the simple themes like 2017 or 2018 or 2019. So, mm. If you see a customizer that has more than four or five options, you already know that it's more complex. And so the, the fact is, is that there is some side effect happening here somewhere. And the question is, is whether it's in the customizer at all. Um, mm -hmm. So let's go back, let's go back uh, to the other place. And uh, so let's see what else is here. Well, wow. just out of an excess of caution down at the very bottom, we just take a look to make sure there's no CSS down there doing something bizarre. Let's see, related posts, forums. I mean, just, the heart, uh, there is uh, a media a, query. There's a brute force thing, obviously, of hiding the CSS class or div that actually shows that menu. That's a brute force mechanism that we could use. I don't, I'd rather not because it's, uh, it's not, it's clunky. It's not the ideal thing, but 
worst cases would you have to would you might have to do that um mm. because it, it means being displayed it's being generated somewhere uh let's see where else uh, another thing you might want to try is to edit the actual uh post or page and see what ocean wp has been set to yeah so or we could inspect that particular top left top bar left and see you know yeah that's where, that's where which it's too. coming from and so on i mean it's always possible that it's been hard coded into the theme which would be pretty ugly but who knows well this is awkward now it looks like it's in the mobile version uh yeah well you're gonna you're gonna turn off the customizer like get out of the customizer and then go to the web page okay i'll just do it like this then menu area Let's see hmm dock this uh we got the right target yeah, and undock the um yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on here that's not good I didn't do it. I swear. <laughs> oh, you got ten errors in the console. Five warnings. It's just like where? Where did? Oh, there. Yeah. Hmm. So there, I mean, there's there's stuff happening here. That's not ideal. But anyway, um, that's beside the point. But it might have. So like, where's our menu right now? It kind of disappeared because yeah. So um, because of it's actually it's actually hiding when you resize basically. Yeah. Um. So keep going up. I want to see like. The container that contains all of it. Menu item two two yes. four. Here we go. Definitely being added somewhere. It's uh, a full. I mean, is there is there options in your in your? This theme? looks weird. Schema dot org site well, navigation element. No, that's just a that's just some uh, that's a general part of the the theme that's identifying where the navigation is. Mm. Um, so let's go back into your um, item two twenty three. Two 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 three. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah that's that's the, that's the idea of it. Let's go back to the uh, to the uh, like Jock's point about looking at the page to see if the menu is being added. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and go carefully into that. So, so uh, X out of publish. Oh, okay. And then pages? Uh, yeah, pages. And just uh, go to all pages. Okay. And it's currently the home. It is being run by uh, Elementor. See there? It says home front page Elementor. So Elementor is running this. So uh, if you go into uh, edit, it will. It won't invoke Elementor, but uh, uh, Elementor thinks it's running this page. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go down to uh, the uh, various properties on the extreme. Uh, Right, uh, uh, you want to see the uh, properties for the uh, uh, Ocean WP, and where is that? Normally, it's uh, right here. Oh, I see. You are in uh, block mode, or in Gutenberg. Uh, <laughs> Click on the menu. Under oh, there it is. Ocean WP settings. Yeah. Okay. Uh, See if it says, uh, go down to menu and see what they say there. Yeah. Main navigation menu default. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, and it's it's either main menu or. Uh, now, if we click main menu, that may be what you can create for the right hand side, and mm -hmm. default right. is the one that we're now seeing. Maybe. So, so let's try that. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, what do you think? I mean, you know. Yeah, that's as good as any. That's when you're into into uh, page builder. Womp womp. That didn't work. 
Can you try the theme panel? Because you might have a menu template which is running your menus. So on the left hand side underneath S SEO. Mm -hmm. Do I do I leave this as it is or do I bring it back to the default? No, I should I would change it back to the default. Because all your other pages are gonna be set that way. Okay. Hasn't really done anything. Theme panel. Theme panel. But as an elementary page, do you do you have to have pro Jack in order to be able to do a header change? Uh I think so. I I, I can't, I can't remember. So. You can do menu changes. You can put in a menu as long as you then in Ocean WP turn off uh, the menu in the header. Uh, right, which is what we're trying to figure out now. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's why I suspect it might. Well, at least we know the question now is how do does one turn off the default menu that's in the Ocean WP header? If if it's an Elementor um, menu, uh, when you get into the page in in the actual Elementor. Um, uh, no, but it's not an elementary menu. No, no, but I mean, you know, sometimes you're in elementary allows you to do a menu in the header. That's it's right. Like a header section. You know how you do like right. edit header or edit footer or edit actual page? Yeah. So if not. you go back to that page, you should be able to see uh, if it's there or not. Yeah, but we want to view it with elementary rather than. Exactly. Rather right. than Gutenberg. Uh, but elementor here has nothing to do with it. It's not elementary. You sure, Al? Yeah. It refers to it as an Elementor page. There is no, no, it doesn't matter. Elementor page is everything between the footer and the header. Right now, mm -hmm. Elementor. No, not, not, not Elementor today. No, but on this site, Elementor is not in the header. How do you know that? Because I looked at the code. Okay, uh, good. So you can't be an element. So that menu is not being generated. That, no, that means the menu, the menu is being generated by the by the, the theme then. Yeah, it's by the theme. Well, so you, did, can you tell us if it's hard coded into the theme? It's not hard coded. It's something with the theme settings. Which is this? This is this theme panel. So let's continue then. Let's continue uh, with the theme. Yeah, panel. Oh, that'll be under appearance. We'll click on skip there. Yeah, we're going to continue into the theme panel because this yeah. theme has its own control panel for various settings. This is beyond yeah. the customizer. A lot of themes have the customizer options. That's right. They have this, and then they have all this other stuff. Okay. Yeah, this part confused me, for because sure. This is the theme. This is the theme. Mm -hmm. um, check uh, my library. My library. Might be there. Uh -huh. What is that okay. test? I don't know. <laughs> oh, just hit edit. This was like three months ago. <laughs> just hit edit and see what uh, what it gets you. Well, did this with this menu always there, Sarah? Is this a menu? Was it was that menu the second one on the left? Was it always there, or is it something that just popped up one day? No, it was always there. Uh -huh. This was always there. I see. Well, uh, I mean, I was able to edit as in like that means I've added in a few that things. Means if, but... if it was always there from day one. And it's a built-in theme, theme function for sure. So there's a question is where the heck do you turn off this? So what is this theme that you're using? What's it called? Ocean, Ocean WP. WP. Oh, that's the name of the theme. And the and the, yeah. and the elementor is the uh -huh. so is there is there a is there an option for Ocean WP for a default menu bar? Yes, there is. Where is that set? Uh that's why I, I can't I can't tell because I never use it's in both the, the same thing is in the customizer as in the uh, the menu panel. Really? Right, there was a default setting, and then a selection. The drop down had one item in it: main menu. Right. But when you chose main menu, the uh, left side top bar did not go away. Right. Correct. Which would make you think that it was not the default menu, because when you turn it off, it's still there. Oh. It's using the default, whatever the default is. Well, it's not that default menu. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's not the default. Uh, you know, we just your eyes can be bleed, it. It, it, when you turn off the default menu, that item still remains. So yeah. one would conclude that it's not controlled as the default menu. Mm. But that could be a bug uh, in the theme. Well, you want to you want to use a menu in the menu editor, not the menu from the theme. So, yeah, that's weird that a theme. Well, it's not surprising because a theme can 
Let me just Google the uh, Ocean WP default menu. Because I mean, in theory, what you'd want to do is add to this main, this left bar menu, the search and social stuff, and then change it from left align to right align, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe the trick is to reconfigure the current single top menu and then deal with the CSS to get it from left to right side. That would seem to be a, a not humongous change, right? But if I wanted right. to edit it, then right. I would use CSS, left. right? Dan, what do you think? <laughs> but if I if we do that, then I would have to figure out how to edit it later on too, right? Because if I want to change the menu, right? But I need to use uh, from HTML? the menu, um, either in the customizer or the menu panel, adding a search bar is a pretty basic thing, right? I mean, that's just drag and drop the item from the left okay. side to the right side. So that doesn't affect the right. Placement. That's not a big okay. deal. I don't know what's generating the social icons. There was some setting <clears throat> in yeah, the customizer for that. Yeah, yeah, we found that one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just looking at the now, the, uh, there's also the possibility that if you looked in that top left menu, um, if you just inserted, you know, a, a hide uh, declaration, <laughs> <laughs> um, then leave the code as it is, and it should disappear. I'm looking at the documentation for us, Ocean WP, and uh, I, I I'm just looking at the word default menu. There's a lot of menu items. Uh, it does look like there is a. It does look like there is a built-in menu for here that's not. You can control the CSS. Um, but the the doc, the documentation appear to show you that there is a. Um, I don't add a button to the. Uh, <laughs> This is way too complex, isn't it, guys? <laughs> way too complex. Way, way too complex. It's it's like sometimes it's so cute that it's too cute for itself, basically. Like fixing a car in the garage where you're doing it through a Zoom car. I, I, thought, I thought this would be not that big of a deal because it's just it a menu bar. It almost turns out to be 20% of the work takes 80% of the time. Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't. You can get ninety percent of your site built, and then it's like ten times as much work to finish it. Well, let me put it this way: I don't think we have anybody on this call right now that is a, an Ocean WP expert. Am I right, right about that? Or am I wrong? I'm a, an expert on Ocean WP, but only when you're using the classic editor. If you're using the block editor, right. I uh, I don't know what. Uh, Turn Ocean off. WP does with uh, the block editor. Right, let's prove Dan's point correct. Turn off Elementor in the plugins uh, and see if your menu goes away. Plugins, where are you? Just turn it off. There let's you see are. what happens when you turn off Elementor. Ah. If that menu, if that menu is still there, it has nothing to do with Elementor, right? Will it, will it break my whole website? <laughs> oh, well, well, for sure, of course. But I mean, you can you can reactivate it. Right? Uh, settings. Yeah, deactivate. Oh, oops, deactivate. Wee, no. Mm -hmm. no. Um, so Jack, you were saying that your experience with Ocean WP, but not when using with, the block uh, editor or the block editor with Elementor? Uh, uh, no, uh, never with the block editor with Elementor. Right, uh, okay. And, uh, no, that's fine, I, I just wanted to that. check that detail. So that's what we're yeah. doing here. We're using it with Elementor. Okay. Now deactivate. We load the site and throw another. Maybe you should submit it to one of those ah! uh, group groups. It's still there. Exactly. I see it. <laughs> Dan is exactly correct. It doesn't matter that Elementor is installed. That menu is totally irrelevant of Elementor. Go Interesting back. Though, why it was styled, Alex, and the rest of the page wasn't. Yeah, it, totally. It's totally part of a CSS. Or so there's something, there's some, some things very specific that's doing that because it's able to stand independently of the rest of the page. That's right. That's right. So I reactivated it. 
does that work or should I be? Yeah, I'll go ahead and reload the site. Did we ask if you had a backup of your site? Yay! Well, I mean, you can always actually. Go do you have back, a backup? Right. Of your site? Well, let's ask this question we always ask. I'm. I'm. Sh it's somewhere. I just don't remember exactly where. And you don't have a backup. There's. Wait, there's wait, somewhere. Are you a, are you a site answer, ground customer? The answer is no. The answer. Is no. I. I have site ground. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. Okay, then you, you got to know, back up If you every don't day. know where your backup is and you can't, and if what we just did broke your site and you can go back to reinstall, it means you don't have a backup. That's the answer. If you have a backup, you've used your backup. If you don't have a backup and you don't know where it is and you've never used it, you don't have a backup. Uh, okay, well, you've got site ground, which means you have a daily backup. Yeah, you have. Uh, it's only capped for 30 days, though. Um, if you've never used it before. You probably don't know if it's invalid or invalid. And just by the way, guys, Friday the 13th just passed was... <laughs> the global backup test your system day <laughs> and uh, at least 10 or 15 people, you know, participated out of the 7 billion. I, I actually, I have a person on the call here. We will go unnamed where I had to invoke a backup because they, they crashed their site very recently. But that, that person will go unnamed. And, okay. Uh, okay. It's interesting. Uh, cPanel uh, hosts can have this thing called jet backup which is pretty cool and a little more sophisticated uh, in its choices than SiteGround's basic scheme, Japan. even though it's cPanel as well. So so, uh, so at this point, uh, we're at 8 o'clock. We have about half hour left. I <laughs> Honestly, uh, this is one of those things we can spend the rest of the half hour still not get. You know? So so I, I unfortunately have to say to you that um, you, have, you, you have a free version of OceanWP, right? Correct. You don't really have support. So the question becomes, how do you get support for this? To actually understand what the heck's going on here, like why would there, why would this menu appear here no matter what, and you can't remove it? And there's no obvious way to remove it. So I assume they have some kind of a form of something of some kind, right? Do they have some sort of like yeah, they have a support? Well, they've well, got to be the wp.org form, right? Uh, this is a theme, right? So I don't know. Yeah, but it's Jack. Form. Is it not in the repo? Yeah, it's a repo uh, theme. Right, so there'll be a forum for it, whether or not anybody pays any attention to it. Yes. Is one question, but there's also the stack, uh, we call overflow or whatever. Yeah, they have a very active support forum on the org. Okay. Not all answers or questions are Or you can always tweet uh, on the Ocean WP Twitter um, handle yeah. and uh, ask for a pointer to a good place to ask your question. <laughs> Where do I go to get an answer to a question about the bloody default menu and how do I get rid of it? And then hopefully someone will point you to the right place to ask the question. Oh, uh, okay. So it's easy enough to do, right? Yeah. I mean, there is, I mean, I looked up a, a, a Google search. I'm sure you've done this, but like turning off Ocean WP default menu and I got a link to crankymedia.com. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, there's a whole bunch of tips here. Some of the stuff we've actually looked at. Um, let's see here. Yeah, top menu color settings. No, that's not what I looked at. Turning off. Uh, I thought I just saw it, but anyway, there was a, uh, Actually, I have a question. Is this is it possible this is not actually a menu, but rather an incarnation of the default menu and being stuck to the top of the page somehow with some kind of a plugin that's kind of re or basically duplicating the, 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 the actual, well, yeah, the, the duplicating a menu, menu that's not actually that. there. Sticky menu plugin. What's that? That's the plugin she has for... Uh, which allows a, a menu item to uh, a menu to remain sticky. Right, but I put that in only more recently. That menu thing was a problem from beforehand. Okay, that's good information. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Because there was there was somebody that actually was mentioning that here. That yeah. Yeah. I just I just I can't understand. I mean, well, let's let's just quickly go maybe, to the, uh, maybe this one. The ocean stick anything? Some of the stuff came with the with the website when I installed it, so. Well, let's have a look. It's an opt-in and it's activated. 
no. by deactivating it. Eh, well. That's another, that's another option. Which, what? It, if I'm not opted in, then how can I de deactivate it? I'm confused. <laughs> well, if it, I mean, if there's a deactivate, then in theory, that's the one to choose. Uh, right. Okay. Do, 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 do. Boink. Boink. Nope. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to be. <laughs> I, I mean, there, there's going to be. We're like, we're totally hunting in the dark now. Like, there's no. <laughs> you can tell that, right? Like, there's no real. Um, there's no real. Like, there's no. There's no. We don't have enough expertise with this theme, to be honest. Oh, okay. To actually give you any any really good advice, unfortunately, I apologize. Well, thank you for trying. I. It makes me feel better that it wasn't something so simple that I was like oh, just not trying enough. <laughs> There's, there's also there. the uh, ocean extra up there too. I mean, uh, God knows what all these guys do. Yeah, you know, add features like widgets, meta boxes, premium okay. extensions. Okay. No, but I mean, this is probably being introduced as part of the theme somewhere. Potentially in the code, it might be hard coded. It might be a feature of this. I mean, it just I just never used it, so I don't know. Like, it's, every theme is a different program, basically. Every theme is a unique piece of code with unique set of functionality, side effects, interactions, conflicts. It's just the world of WordPress that we're in. It's just what it is. Um, and um, unfortunate, but uh, this is a, a side effect of using themes that you don't necessarily understand exactly all they do. Um, so if I was to just completely use a different theme, then maybe that would be easier. <laughs> I mean, you could you could go into your theme and do a live preview of of another theme and see what happens. Right. Okay. Try Astra. Try, yeah. Go to no. Just go to your appearance and try 2019 or whatever, and just do a, a live preview and see if the uh, see if the menu bar disappears. Don't apply it. Just do a live preview to see if your menu bar disappears. We don't have any menu bars active right now. So go to. Uh, I'll just go to the the built-in ones. Twenty. Uh, uh. Where is your built in one? Oh, 2020. Let's just, just do a live preview of that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done this before? Uh, not on this one, but I've done it on a previous website, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, your, your menu bar is not. Is that the this, same menu bar? No, this is not supposed to be there. Well, what is that? That's just a page. And that one is supposed to have a drop down. Right. And I understand that. But are those the top levels of the original menu bar? No. These are. We have home blog destinations about contact. Home blog. Home blog destinations, contact, and about. But the destinations doesn't have the drop down. Yeah, that's okay. That's and then an article and that one has article coming soon. But what the heck is article coming soon? Where is that coming from? I have a I have a non-published or like a, a hidden page that's called article coming soon that but I didn't publish it to the menu or to, add it to, to the menus menu. Here. Go to menus under Oops. Wow. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. <laughs> menus. Menus and just see is, is there a menu actually being set here? So where's the, let's um, go That's to menu weird. locations at the bottom. Yeah, so we're not even, we're not, we haven't turned it on at all. So if you turn on uh, desktop horizontal menu, in theory, we're going to see your menu bar. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> That's actually bad because what we've proven here is uh -huh. that your theme is introducing a menu that you have no idea how to turn off. That's what's bad. Uh, and we've switched sides in the process. Uh, and, it's, and it's switched the sides in the process. So that's bad. That's bad. It's, it gives me, a, it gives me a, your experience has proven me I will never use Ocean WP. That, <laughs> that basically was proven to me today. As much as I love it and looks wonderful, 
Athena does what you just discovered, I will never use because my end user is going to eventually do this and it'll drive him crazy like it's driving you. And it's just not acceptable, from my, from my personal opinion, that, <laughs> that right out of the box, Athena is doing such basic, Weird shit. Misleading, misleading you in such a basic way because menus are a, a, a basic feature of WordPress from day one. Right. I thought I he heard a lot of really good recommendations for this one. That's why I chose it because you know then what? I thought, you know what? Good. I don't listen to any recommendations about people that say I have good experience with a the theme. And the reason why I don't do that is until I have that personal experience myself, I can't, I, I don't know, right? And the reality- well, one, one, of the things, one of the things this preview is telling us is that this top right menu is the way uh, that menu is coded, except for this left align element, which is something which that Ocean WP theme seems to be able to do but which another theme, uh, you know, typically places it wherever sort of it belongs in a default setting, right? So there's something in that setting for the top bar, top left that's forcing it to be left aligned, and that's the thing to look for and get rid of because that'll solve the problem then by shifting it over to the right. We're going to move on. Um, um, uh, all right, so summary, I am not, I'm not just incompetent and uh, I should get a different theme. Yay, thanks. Definitely not incompetent. This theme, is, this theme is misleading you. And I would personally, well, you got to redesign your site to use a different theme, but. That's but okay. I would, start, I would start with going to Ocean WP and seeing if you can get an answer from them. And uh, you might have to upgrade to the paid version to get a proper support, frankly. So, mm -hmm. but, but if you pay for it, you will basically, you will, you should be able to get an answer because they'll, they'll probably have a very simple, straightforward thing. And, and hopefully it's not, Oh, that theme is, is just hard coded. You just have to display none to hide it. Cause if that's the case, well, we could have shown you that right? we could have just find the CSS class that can encompasses the whole theme, do a display none in CSS and bye bye, bye bad menu bar. Right? Can I do that? Well, of course you can, but that's what's, no, there is a pro version of it. Yeah, I've, yeah, you can do that. Do you know how to use CSS? A little bit. No, no. And I have a lot of people who know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, just find the CSS class of that menu. Just go inspect it like we did. Find a, find a class that, or ID that contains the theme and add a CSS class that does a display colon none. And that will hide the menu bar. Display and then, of course, bar. you introduce it later. Hmm. That's that's the brute that's the brute force approach that I would mention. <laughs> that shouldn't be the way that this that this thing works, but it might be. I don't know. It's entirely possible. I didn't find any in their docs that would indicate that. So like, there's something else like that. All right. Uh, there's okay. a question from. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry we couldn't help you further. Uh, <laughs> precise AV. Um, I have a white strip at the footer of my page, and I need to help remove it. Precise AV. Are you still on the call? I didn't see precise AV on the call. Okay. I'm not going to go do it because you're not on the call anymore. Okay. Uh, Andrew? Um, Hi, yeah, I'm here. I'm just trying to find the unmute. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, what's your question? Yeah, my question is I got a white strip at the bottom just above the footer of my website. Um, I was listening to the other stuff that you're going through and I was trying to do it as you guys were teaching the other people, but I couldn't figure it out. All right. Um, should I share my screen? I'll share mine and we can take a look at it and see what you mean. Okay. So this is precise AV solution and you've got a, this little white bar right here. Exactly. Yeah. Your site is actually, this is not the bottom of your site. The bottom of your site is this. So okay. You've got a, uh, you've got a, Block here that I'm going to inspect and see where the heck is this little guy here. Oh boy. It's not that. It's going to be inside there somewhere. So I'm just going to, I'm just looking at the, just looking at this, uh, trying to get to, so that's the footer. That's probably the, uh, wow. I gotta put this on the second window cause I just can't. Uh, 
This is the this is this guy here. Yeah, it's that. So that's this is the the div after container. Div row after. What is the URL of the site? PreciseAVSolutions.com. PreciseAVSolutions.com. Is that Dan? Yeah. Here, Dan. Watch out if you're doing Slack. This is this is a funky element. It doesn't appear to be uh, actually sort of part of this. It's not, it looks like it's not an element. It looks like it's just an empty, empty space with positioning. Um, I was trying to find the color, like to even just to put a black. That doesn't exist. This is not, this is not an element. This is like a, a spacing between two elements of some sort. Got it. That's why you can't find anything because it doesn't exist. It's just spacing that is uh, the space between two elements on your page. Which must be the result of the element above and the element below having padding or spacing or something uh -huh. um, to create the gap, right? Yep. Because in the absence of CSS, that would close up automatically. All right. So there's a footer here. There's this guy, there's that guy, and then there's this, there's this, there's this, there's this container called There it is. He's using Site Origins uh, panel uh, page builder. Okay, it's basically part of this. Well, I mean, at least it's 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 some sort of a workaround on this uh, particular this particular uh, class called Clear Both. It's on HostGator. Yeah. So there's a bunch of stuff happening here on this. Uh, There's, it's just uh, there's an entry footer class with chat as a margin top of 30 pixels, which is causing this, this gap. Okay. Yeah. Um, part of the Sydney theme. I'm going to share your screen, Dan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Second. Oh, sorry, not me. Yeah, Dan will share. He's, sorry. he's identified at least one CSS that contributes to this. Yeah, hold on, I'll, I'll just, I was using the other computer. I was able to identify in the, uh, in the, 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 the pseudo class da colon colon before in, in the, in after the div row, uh, way at the bottom of the, well, not at the bottom of the page actually. Yeah, at the near the bottom of the page, yeah, near the bottom of the content. There's a there's a uh, pseudo there's two suit there's two before pseudo classes, and they they both are. Yeah, the those pseudo classes are causing this spacing to occur as well. When I turn off the uh, the the before, I turn off the uh, the. A clear fix it, it disappears but then the whole pseudo class disappears but there might be a better way to, to fix this yeah. okay that's uh, right so we'll take a look here uh -huh. so it's the it's actually the it's the whole body All right, so we see it's in the primary uh -huh. ID. Except, well, the my screen. go side to side. Sorry? It doesn't look like that particular uh, containing element goes from side to side. Yeah, well, if you like here at zero, you see the difference? Yep, yep, so it's closed up. 
but was there still a line showing? Yeah, there probably is something, another border or something that we have to take a look. Maybe it's part of the... Yeah, but we're in the right neighborhood though, right? Maybe it's part of the footer. Maybe. So Andrew, do you see what Dan's doing? Yeah, I see. It's an empty margin basically. For some reason it's adding that the bottom of so the in each In each article, which is actually the content of, of the page, is the ID that holds the content. It's built of a header, which is usually in the header would be the title of the page, of the, mm -hmm. that specific page. Mm -hmm. Then in here would be the actual content. And then in each article, you would have a footer of the article. It's like a semantic HTML5 structure. Right. But right here, it's not incorporated very well into the whole structure of the page, meaning they put here this footer uh, with a margin, and uh, that that would cause the, the little 30 pixel gap. So what you can do is, if I'll, I'll refresh the page so we can find it again, you can go either to your style sheet or to the customizer and remove this. Footer class? The entry footer and then out of margin 30, uh, margin top zero. But again, you find out now where is this line coming from. It looks like, a, like if I remove this whole thing, See, it doesn't, it doesn't change. So it's something with, with a, a Janssen, uh, oh, here we have maybe this, yeah. Oh, there it is. So another class here has padding. Um, Perfect. Okay. So these are the two things that I would like you need to take a look at and, and remove or adjust. So dot page, dot page dash wrap, page. Dash yeah, but the zero. thing is, this is coming, you see, this is not coming from style sheet. This is coming from either a, a custom CSS in that specific page or the custom one. Because you can see here, it doesn't tell you where it's coming from. Well, it's coming from the code of the... Uh, yeah, this, this one here is coming from a style sheet, right? But this one here is not. So... But, but, yeah, but you can override it in custom CSS. Yeah, you can override it in custom CSS, just, you know, have this... You see, but the normal way it works is having a padding of 83 top and, and 100 bottom. So if I remove this, this is like the normal behavior. And on yep. top again, we have this. Yep. So. So where do I find that to fix it? So you, you're gonna you're gonna add page. Uh, do you know how to use your custom CSS in the customizer? Um, kind of, sort of. If you guys show me where to go, I could find it. Yeah. Okay. So if you, I'm gonna stop sharing, and if you open your site and go to the customizer, we can share. Okay. Should I share my screen? Was that a no or yes? Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Absolutely, yes. All right. So here we are. Is this the right appearance, one? Appearance customize. Appearance customize. Okay. Additional CSS. CSS. Okay. And that's where you pop your dot page wrap and put the new override the new value there. Okay. Do you want to do you want to do you want to go inspect your page, your home page, and we'll show you what where to look for. Yeah, wasn't that pa dot page dash view? Uh it was dot page dash wrap for the for the for the bottom header. For the bottom um so I just type that in here, dash wrap. Hey, dash wrap, dash. Is that correct? No. No. 
inspect your uh, go to the go to your web page. Go to your just keep that open. Uh, you, yeah, you can. I guess you can inspect there. I'll see if it. Uh, is that doing anything? No. You, do you know how to inspect your website? I don't know. I don't know how. No. Sorry. So go, so go to go to just a tab of your website in another in another browser window. Yeah. I feel like we can probably do, do this session every time we. Uh, it's like our backup thing now. This is our second thing: how to inspect CSS. Yeah. We have the backup discussion, then we've got the CSS discussion. Okay, inspect. Right click and inspect on uh, your site. Okay. And then we're gonna look for that page wrap at the top um it'll be at the, i think dan it was at the top of your page, site right it was at the top yeah just do it again the right click inspect again and it should bring up the thing you just clicked on no no you're not you put the cursor right on the, the oh, area in question right okay. now go and it should highlight that specifically so, uh, let's see here yeah so that was yeah now scroll down a bit in that right top window yeah yeah scroll down there a bit so you see footer mm -hmm. i just can't see it because the video is in the way a little bit let me see if i can move this there we go okay um footer, <coughs> footer. entry header entry footer down there yep that's it okay so Click on that. And you're gonna have entry. So copy and copy that dot entry footer margin top 30 pixels. Um, uh, you can copy the. Uh, you can yeah you can click copy the little the, arrow to the left of it there. Uh, no, you can open if, it up. If you right click on that. You can copy the uh, CSS for that. Yeah. Copy. Uh, if he just goes down below, he can see it. Yeah, but I, I just want. You can copy the selector, I believe, to into that, and I'll copy the styles for you. For you. Copy selector. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then go to the uh, CSS. CSS, which is back over here. Get rid of yep. My, get rid of this. Okay. Paste. Paste. Okay. Oh, that's. Oh no, that's gonna be. I think you had to c copy it from down below there. Uh, Alex, I sent it to you in a in a chat. You can see it. To, yeah, but I want to teach him how to use it. Though. It's, no, it's, no, it's no fun giving the answer. You know, like, you know, like, here, here, here's the thing. Like you have to make it suffer first. Our, 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 I mean, I can give you the I can give, I can give you the cheat. So the cheat would be like I just give you the code, you put it in, you don't learn anything. Right. The thing is, is that that won't that will, that will solve your solution today. You won't right. solve your solution tomorrow. Right? Fair enough. Fair enough. So it's important to really learn. So what the first thing you want to do is. So the CSS class that entry dash footer is under styles in the bottom left pane of the inspector there. Bottom left. We're looking at the code, so it says styles. Down, down, down. Keep down going more. down. Okay. So Next box down. down. All so the classes and uh -huh. the rules are underneath on the bottom left pane of underneath. that window. Not not that window. That's your code of your website. Okay. Move your arrow down, down. Keep going, keep going. Right. There you go. See it? Okay, see it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Scroll up a bit. Dot entry footer. Yep. Is the, you can select all that text and copy it to your clipboard. Okay, just select this all and copy. You just it. click it. It'll copy it. There you go. Okay, copy this. So just right click and copy, and then go back to CSS. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now we're gonna get rid of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Paste. Yeah. So now we're going to change the margin to zero pixels, and you can get rid of the uh, and get rid of the clear left. That whole line, get rid of this. Yeah, if you remove it, it'll still be in effect, though. Yeah, but we don't need, we don't care about. And it. add a dot before entry footer. Yes, right. You're missing the uh, you're missing <laughs> the full the, the full definition, right? Because a okay. full class is called dot entry dash footer, right? Go back, yes. go back to your, go back to your uh, inspect. Yeah. See where it says dot entry for you didn't select the dot at the beginning. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. All right. So are we okay now? Yeah, that's that's one thing, and then the other one is the is the page wrap padding okay. bottom. All right. Where do I find that one? Yeah. So that would be. No, you would have to go to the top window. Top window. Yeah. Yeah. Scroll up. 
till you go till you read up oh, more and more it's at, the, it's at the top of your page I yeah it's, it's, it's like the topmost oh, i don't know topmost but one of the bigger, bigger yeah so go down a bit with your yeah more more stop up one up one yeah See page wrap click on that page up okay if you click that there you go so just copy this no yeah, click on it that. oh sorry no not on the arrow on the actual line on the row okay do that. Once you use the plus sign, be able to make your okay, now on, on the bottom left window. Yeah, scroll to the top. All right. So you see, it says page wrap. Yep. Copy that. Yeah. Copy the whole thing with the dot. The whole thing. Yeah. Include if you just box. click it, it'll highlight it. I think. There you go. Okay. Copy. I'm learning. I'm learning. And uh, paste back over here. Missed the, miss the ending line. bracket. I did. I <laughs> sorry. Do okay. I have to go on a new to yeah, tender? Yeah. Okay. Paste. All right, and now do a, a a right bracket, curly bracket. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no. Now change it to the zero. Oh yeah. Okay. Zero. You see, now it's gone. Now publish. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I appreciate it. Isn't it fun? Uh, so, uh, that was fun. fun when you can know fun. how to do that stuff. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my gosh. Thank oh, I you. Hear, I hear Carol actually there. Hey, yeah, Carol. I was pitching in there. Yeah. Um, thank so, uh, yeah, so learning how to use the inspector and uh, getting the right classes is an art and a science, obviously, but you have to really understand the, the fundamentals of web pages to fix these problems. So the, both of the CSS problems we had are really like, if you, you don't understand kind of what you're looking at. It's going to be hard to identify exactly what, where, but suffice it to say, it's a whole thing to learn. Like it's a, it's a developer topic. It's the people, it's a thing that CSS experts and people that write themes, that's what they do. But it's a um, very powerful concept. Hey, Carol. Hi. So um, let's see, are there any other questions? It's uh, getting almost to the end of the, actually it is the end of the session. Already. Cool. Um, okay. Um, I think we're going to finish up. Uh, what do you all think about this mechanism and this m model for doing this? Any, any, any feedback? Um, very helpful. Saves a lot on parking tickets. Yes, that's true. That's true. Put your, comments, put your comments in the chat. I, I think that sharing the people's screens and because they're already logged in their computer, it's much easier and faster than going to a monitor. Um, yeah. What do you think, Robin? Yeah, and I think that um, well, there's really the one thing that would be nice to be able to do that we couldn't do in the in-person one is have some sort of um, page that's open that we sort of collect details as we go and then at the end of the session the page is done and that would be handy um, with some sort of a shared document but otherwise i think that this format works well we can use zoom also for the in-person meetings yeah that's true we could yeah and have people sign in and log in and show their site uh, yeah so instead of me on my computer they actually join a zoom meeting as a, as a, I, I, I don't think there's anybody who would disagree that the in-person meetings have a social aspect that this can't duplicate. Uh, so they're still worth having, but there's this is functionally equivalent. Functionally, it is equivalent. It may not be as fun, and there's no pizza. There's no virtual pizza. I guess I can, I can send you all a, a pizza emo, um, emoji, but not as fun. There you go. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> There. One of the things I found was that it would be very nice to have the uh, uh, URL of the offending page or uh, post and be able then to do a built with uh, type analysis quickly so that you could see what uh, uh, plugins and themes and so forth are being used and what might be causing things to go astray. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure uh, if you can uh, force uh, 
submitters to put that in and their questions, but it would really be helpful. Uh, I found that I was spending a lot of time getting the uh, site up and then finding out what was inside, et cetera. Yeah. Well, we'll do our best to, to do that. Um, we'll probably, we'll see what happens next time. I, I, I do actually prefer the, the in-person approach just because it's, uh, gives people a chance to like, this is, uh, it's hard for you all to, unless you, I, I don't know if, if I, I, to, I can turn on the, uh, the public chat and everybody can kind of see each other's stuff. But, um, I, I it's, it's, it's got its pluses and minuses for sure. I think that, uh, I like the idea of having the zoom meeting running in parallel. So people can join even if they're not there and then they could kind of see what's happening. Cause we're going to be, communicating. I think one of the things we tried was there was an issue of background noise of being picked up on the computer. So it's hard to loop back. If everyone is in, if there's partial in person and partial online, it's hard to feed back our, our, our noise to everybody on the call because there's a lot of talking physically. So it, it kind of creates a second class citizen mentality for uh, the people that are not there. And it's not really fair. Uh, so they're not kind of getting the full experience. So you see they're all virtual or all physical kind of thing. So and I had that experience before and it wasn't, it wasn't fun for the people on the call. Um, Actually, Alex, uh, you know, I'm part of the Durham uh, meetup as well. And they do exactly what you just mentioned. Uh, they do have the, uh, you know, uh, web session going. So last week I couldn't go. So I just dialed in and it was perfect. They have a person, uh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face meeting, but, uh, Whoever couldn't go, we just dialed in. How did the sound from the meeting come through to all the other participants? Actually, it was fairly good. And uh, I think, you know, they had the control, so they could uh, kind of mute, uh, you know. Uh, uh -huh. So they, they, uh, they could. Control. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't have much, much of a problem. Actually, it worked very well. Yeah, we have, we have half the people muted now. So there's not a lot of background noise anyway. So it's, yeah. people are in, in fairly quiet areas. Well, that's good. Thank you for, for joining us, man. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Most okay, everyone. To, and and that's why I come from New Market, so this one worked out really well for me. Oh, sure, for sure. <laughs> We're driving up to Finch. Yeah. So, is this every Tuesday? No, this is once a month. Third, <laughs> third oh, Tuesday. Sorry. Uh, hey, listen. If you want me to have this every Tuesday, I'd, I'd be happy to start charging for a for a class and start and hang out every two or three hours every Tuesday with you guys. <laughs> for now, this is every 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 month. Fair Actually, I'm returning to the meetup uh, presentations. Uh, uh, I have one listed right now, and I'm using the remote uh, connection, uh, COVID uh, remote uh, connection, uh, because uh, I thought originally when I started doing it that uh, uh, I'd be able to get maybe five or six people. Uh, but uh, now you can't even do that uh, where I wanted to... Uh, do the presentations. And so uh, I'm now going uh, online and we'll see how that works. Cool. Good stuff. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Alex. Thank, Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Very well. Good night, all. Take care, I think is the word. Take care. Yep. <laughs> Keep well. <laughs>
make sure that everybody has a chance to uh, log off. But yeah, where are you calling from, Brian? Mississauga. Yeah, right on. We have a, there's a Peel region meetup starting up, but I don't know how, how that's all going to kick off with the this whole coronavirus thing. But um, we've had these meetings for several years now, once a week, or sorry, once a month, third two, now it's third Tuesday, but we've cycled around to this, this format of let's fix your website where we just do a clinic for people that are having issues and um, it's, it's it, it has the best turnout. It has the most interest because people learn from each other's issues and um, there's always a set of recurring kind of stuff that comes up. Sometimes we fix people's problems. Sometimes we don't. We have a nice group of experts too. You've probably heard some of them, Robin, Dan, Jock. Uh, I'm not a really an expert. I just kind of facilitate it. I, I kind of know, know it enough to be dangerous and do stuff with WordPress, but um, yeah, it's uh, this this format uh, is interesting because it usually takes me more like four to five hours that on the meeting to run this. So I have to get down there. It's an hour usually. Stick around afterwards. I get home around ten. And here I the six thirty to eight thirty meeting. I'm done, and I, so I just bought myself probably two to three hours out of my day for to running this thing. So it's and maybe some some people will enjoy this format, and uh, you know, maybe this is where they'll be more comfortable. If we can get people to post really clear questions up front, although with the, with the chat session, I wanted to check to see how I have it set up, but I think we should be able to do people with chat as they, as they go, and then they'll be able to post their questions in the chat system. And that'll be, that'll be good as well. I have to, I have to check my settings for this meeting to see if, uh, see if I have to set it up correctly. Well, it's all good. Now I got to figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> I'm just going to end the meeting and it'll be automatically logged out. Well, anyway, thanks very much. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I'm, uh, it's Rob. Uh, I've attended uh, a number of your sessions over a couple of years ago. Oh. And uh, I find this, uh, you can kind of get right into the people's web page and that, and uh, you're, not, you're not disturbed by the other people talking around you. Um, so, it's certainly from a travel perspective, it, it's a benefit uh, for, for me. So um, I think you, 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 ha you have a wonderful group down there of people. Yeah, for, actually for everyone, I think it's a benefit to not have to travel for sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, um, it's, I actually prefer now that I experienced it compar compared to many years doing, going. I, I, just, I don't know if it's the, the dynamic is the right for everyone because some people do like the kind of more of a free for all of a physical space. And sometimes people want to break off harder to do that here because it's a lot more facilitated through this session. But yeah. we, had, we had 20 some people show up, which is just about as much as we show up to the physical one. So, yeah. And, and again, it was sort of at the, at the last, so maybe, uh, you know, you'll get more but uh you know certainly the the personal one is nice to have um because you can branch out into a little corner or something like that too and and talk i mean i think that maybe one of the things that could be useful is for people to kind of uh share and now we have a little bit more time to introduce to do introductions so we might actually have a, a chance to call on everyone because i normally don't have enough time to actually do that but here if we have 20 people they have a quick quick round about introductions that could be okay. And then maybe that's a way we can take questions to kind of set the agenda as well. And because, yeah. because now that we've saved some time, we can actually use it for other purposes too. Yeah. I see you sent me the, uh, the link. I did do, use that, but I couldn't change the digits. Uh, that was the problem. I could get into the account, put my account in, but it wouldn't allow me to change the, the three zeros. Oh, I think you just put your number in and then you start typing the number. Yeah. Tried to, and it would not, let me overwrite that at all you don't you can't you, if you if you load it like this yeah that was it i couldn't go in here it, and then just type five zero zero it doesn't do that yeah it didn't so i'll try it again tomorrow then okay no problem i do appreciate you doing this thank you thank you i have a question more of a technical nature uh, do you have a green screen behind you with the uh, cn tower and the skyline in Bose? i do indeed that's right uh, that had a great office. This is uh, this is uh, Zoom has a feature where you can choose a virtual background. You've got to have a little bit of ambient color, or sorry, light, because otherwise, not too much. Usually, when I have some natural color from my window here, it's it's a it's a little bit better. But right now, because it's 
I gotta turn on the light overhead and I can see. Where are you tonight, Martin? You uh, on this side of the pond or the other side? This side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so if but I have a uh, last, in, so it's a green screen behind you or just a yeah, it's a green screen. So if I if I don't have anything, I have like a green. Uh, oh, okay. Like a like a photographer's. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Use, I use this a lot, so you can put just about anything behind you. Wow. Oh. <laughs> You can put it's like a it's like a, a television show, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 even if you don't have a green screen, uh, Zoom has a as a not as good feature, but you have you have this called virtual background. You can turn it on, and you say I I don't have a green screen, and it does its best job to do it, but it doesn't do it as quite as quite as clearly as this. Normally, what I do is when I have clients I talk with, I put up the location of their city. In the background, so like I have a client that's, in San Francisco. That's a nifty one. Toronto. This is Austin, Texas. <laughs> Sometimes I'll put. I do an Ask Me Anything, so I'll put a uh, kind of like this kind of like a uh, a branding for my company. This is Maryland. This is Boston. This is actually Maryland. Oh no, Alexandria, Virginia. I think that's what it. This is uh, Halifax, I believe. This is Sault Ste. Marie. This is a place in Massachusetts. I forgot where this place is, but this is Minnetonka, Minnesota. This is Los Angeles, I believe. So, uh, so I kind of have all these buildings and I kind of do that for people to make them feel comfortable. Brooklyn, Brooklyn did it themselves. Yeah. That's a that's a very good trick. Zoom is a very, very cool piece of software. This is a company that's at the end of all of this stuff, they're going to come out as the leader in web conferencing in the world if they're not already, but they're really going to be known by people that have never even heard of it before. Well, I had never heard of them, so I've learned quite a few things in these uh, meetups. Absolutely. Have a good one. I'm glad that you're here. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Alrighty. Okay, I'm gonna sign. I'm gonna sign off now, and, and uh, we're gonna end the meeting. Take care, everyone.